I saw some children in the background a moment ago. Uh, what's the reaction been to people in the park? Now, you know, perhaps they being San Francisco, people are a little more used to this sort of thing with a lot of robots and autonomous vehicles being tested in the area. But um, I know every time there's a uh, video online, they do really well in terms of traffic. So what's the, um, what's the reaction been so far? Yeah, people, people love it. I mean, San Franciscans are used to self-driving cars and, and, and maybe robots here and there. I think there's still some, something novel about seeing a, a, a walking robot dog come, come at you in a, in a park. It's still not normal. I think that's probably, this is the last year that we're going to be able to say that, um, specifically in San Francisco, but um, it's still um, a, a sense of amazement. Um, little children are, are potentially scared. Uh, uh, Medium-sized children love it. Uh, most humans that we encounter love it. Um, dogs, uh, absolutely uh, binary reaction. They love it or hate it. So <laughs> the smaller dogs, as you, you know, they live up to the cliche, the smaller dogs uh, tend to be a little more aggressive. But uh, we are, we're, we're um, sensitive to not, uh, not to upset the puppies and, and, and ask the owners first, you know, if it is cool, is, is the dog cool? Um, uh, and so oftentimes when we encounter a dog, we'll sit down uh, and, and see how the dog reacts. And then if, if it's the owner's encouraging it or everything seems cool, we'll stand up and, and sometimes have to play with the other dog. I mean, it, it's, it, it's funny, you know, this is exactly what just the turn, right? The novelty of it, right? Just people staring at the robot. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you heard anything about how, because I know, uh, a Singapore, a park in Singapore was using Boston Dynamics, right? To remind people about social distancing. Did you see that? Yep. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that, uh, we saw, saw, saw a lot of that story. You know, people have not, um, uh, everybody wants to know what we're doing with it. We're, we're explaining that we're testing the software and, and offering this to people to try out for themselves. Um, uh, we, we, there hasn't been too much concern about monitoring or, or things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it's on people's minds. And uh, if you go a little bit farther forward, you will... There's oh, a, I am finished this, Pinona. <laughs> we usually encounter some folks in there. We, we uh, found a gentleman playing the flute the other day. We led our dog around a little bit, like a Pied Piper. So which way do you want me to go, left or right? Well, the right looks a lot more difficult. So let's see if we can get over that tiny little bridge. Dean thinks he's a, a pro now. Yeah. He's been doing it for 10 minutes. He's a pro. He's certified. You get, you get a certificate at the end of the walk. <laughs> How many folks have done this? Uh, it's been the team and then friends and family to date. We haven't gone pug book with it. So on Tuesday, uh, we're opening this up where you can sign up uh, and take a walk. So um, uh, I'm going to guess it's been in the teens, if, if even that, that have actually walked the dog yet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Isn't that I, great? That is actually, that, that's really cool. I mean, it's cool, especially when you're thinking, okay, it's not just that I'm remote controlling uh, a robot, but I'm remote controlling it from the other side of the continent uh, right. on, my, on my laptop without any, as you said, without any special software, without any prior instruction. Um, you know, I, I suspect that most people in Polaris play more video games than I do. And so, the fact that I can make sense of this. All right. So now what? No, I hit well, now we have. Now we're at a decision point. Oh man. <laughs> uh, cool. So uh, let's see. What, why don't we? Let's do 180 degrees and let's see if we can get uh, through the pagoda. No guarantees, but uh, the the dog the spot will survive. Oh, yeah, you'll walk. Take a video of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a that's a good uh, angle. So you put it in stairs mode, and then you do your best to to drive up there. And you just kind of commit to it, and Spot should be doing uh, all the work. Wow, isn't that incredible? So Jeff, what, just explain explain a little bit more about you, you say Spot does all the work. How is it? It's, it, it, it's sensing the the thresholds on those stairs, and it and it's it's calculating the best place to put its uh, put its feet. Um, 
And so, you know, Jean really just pointed the direction generally of that staircase, um, said forward, and it, it walked up the steps. So uh, the attention each step, put its foot in the proper place. And we take this for granted as human beings, but, and it, it had to shift its weight as it's climbing. So that's a, a really difficult task for robots. Um, you know, it used to be the, the joke was when the robot apocalypse happens, just run up some stairs and, and you'll be fine. Um, and so it's interesting to see that a, this robot could do it with minimal direction from me. Yep. But just yep. just from, an, from an engineering standpoint, Jeff, like how difficult is that? I mean, you've been in robotics, you were at Google for, you know, a sure. long time. So just talk to how difficult it is. Oh, yeah. No, that's an, that's an 11 out of 10. Uh, that, that is testament to 20 years of development and, you know, it's really a couple of things there. It's, it's, this is the one company on earth that, 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 um, uh, really got that right and, and had the nerve to do it. You know, Boston Dynamics, the attitude and why I'm not afraid to walk up the stairs as soon as we got the, the robot. Um, they're all about trying to break this machine so that they can make it better. And they spent 20 years doing that. And, uh, and this is the result of it. And, and I think we're all going to benefit from it and every other robotics company is. But that is the algorithms that are developed there. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just trial and error and then certainly a lot of math uh, and a lot of smart folks. But cannot underestimate the amount of investment that went into that, um, uh, that work and this result. Um, and now it's, uh, now it's, I, I think it's going to be the kind of thing we take for granted moving forward because they just proved that, uh, this type of mobility is finally possible. Um, and so it's super, super, super exciting. Um, and it's still amazing to me when I see it in person or when I pilot it up a, a set of steps, um, that it actually works. Yeah, it's a great point. You know, we, we obviously in the robotics media world, Boston Dynamics comes up all the time, right? Yeah. And, you know, people, I've heard many folks get on them, oh, well, you know, they, they're just now commercializing a product after all this time, right? And I always come back to basically what you just said is, you know, they've been, pushing, they've been pushing the boundaries of engineering forward for some time now, right? And um, it's incredibly hard and, you know, it just goes unnoticed. No, nope, it's uh, and it's and I think that's like equal um, uh, 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 credit goes to technical acumen and uh, again the the nerve to try and, and not teach not treat this machine as precious because um, you wouldn't get anywhere um, and so it's this is this is a result of it but it's it's super cool and uh, you know I, I do I think, think we're blocking a pathway to oh, are we okay. able to send the stairs or should yeah. I turn around. Well, so you know what? Uh, this is going to be the scariest part. Um, why don't you turn around 180 degrees? Because it actually prefers to go down backwards. Yeah, right. And that's due to the knees, right? Uh, that's a Boston question. I'm not qualified. So <laughs> maybe Dakota, you could guide us as to when we're good, good place. That, does that seem good? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, let's just just go backwards, Gene. We'll see we'll see if we do. So it. do I hit stairs, right? Uh, yes, you are. Yes, hit stairs, please. And you're in stairs mode. And so, yes, the right stick will go backwards. Wow. Going blind down a staircase backwards. Now, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> and you can just take, keep taking a walk. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, the right way, just to the right still? Uh, just go straight. Yep, straight down the path. And I'm surprised. We've actually generally we'll run into 10, 15 uh, dogs at this hour. We've got nobody tonight. It's not the most beautiful night in San Francisco. It was the first. It wasn't that the first thing we saw was a dog. Though. So I mean, we saw one, yeah, but we invariably we run into just so many people were out with their dogs. Uh, usually on this path, it's fun. I was about to ask. We saw that we just went through a, a darker patch of, of you know the trees overhanging. Did Spot have headlights? Uh, interesting. Uh, no, it's got the indicator lights on the front, but that would be uh, uh, certainly could add that. It's really, you know, you kind of you get the mobility platform, and then whatever you want to put on it, you put on it. We put our own uh, lidar package, our own camera package, um, our own uh, uh, networking. And so, one of the things that we're doing, you know, to, so that people can get a leg up when they want to do this sort of thing. We're offering former to anybody that has a spot to just get a, our former configuration and out of the box, uh, you know, do what we're doing here. Um, and then additionally, get all the telemetry off of the robot. Um, are you seeing any spikes in demand in any 
one of those areas. And we've heard obviously a lot about, you know, warehouse and e-commerce because of sure. the pandemic. But, uh, you know, obviously, as you noted, the, the need for uh, good fleet intelligence is in almost every space. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're we, you know, we've, we've seen growth in, in lots of areas. I, I think the, the logistics is a given. We're just more, um, and we're seeing growth in everything, but we're super excited about um, agriculture right now uh, because the applications are real um, and the uh, environment is structured enough. You generally have rows and you've got um, certain expectations of, for your navigation system. So um, seeing a lot of growth there. Um, we're also particularly um, uh, excited about construction. It seems to be the next uh, semi-structured environment. It's not the Wild West of the public street. There's real work to be done. Um, it's a data-rich environment. It's a problematic environment. Um, but we're seeing all sorts of companies take uh, rifle shots at a, at a trade or even a, just a specific aspect of a trade. Um, and so you're starting to get real robots out there doing real work. So construction is, is particularly interesting to us, but really it's... Um, it, it's hard to answer because we're seeing so much growth now um, uh, in all sorts of, uh, you know, things that are just becoming automatable and, you're, right. and, and companies are standing up and they're realizing, hey, I can get some off the shelf hardware. It's more about uh, understanding the problem space and then building just enough application code for the application and then strapping something like Foreman on where you have a management layer. Um, and it's, it's more about am I solving a real problem and do I have the right team to go address that, that industry problem? Then how do I build a robot? How do I stand up a robotic company? Uh, so, you know, for us, we very much want to be one of those components. Um, and we understand you're going to need to do your own application. Great. But you don't need to reinvent the wheel and build your cloud infrastructure and your monitoring software um, and your, and your, your uh, monitoring layer. So, uh, so I don't know. We've seen a lot of growth, and I think it's uh, it's like uh, we wanted to be an accelerant to all these other companies that are tackling these applications. I think the, the manufacturing is a given, and logistics is a given, but everything else is just it seems like it's popping right now. Uh, so I think that you know I'm I'm super interested in cobotics and and watching that trend. I think that it's it's interesting when a, a human and a robot work together. Um, but kind of to the point of a robot, the novelty a fleet of robots is is actually impressive what, what can happen with it. That's the way I feel about robotics. Now, I, I start to talk about it as human back robotics. What is, human back robotics, what does it mean instead of having an integration which is like we're doing right now with one robot, how can I have one human manage 20, 50, 100, 1,000? Now, the productivity gains are insane and you're actually getting so much work done. And that's what, like, uh, that's what gets me out of bed. And like, how, how can we make that as... Uh, manageable as possible and, and accelerate that as much as possible because that's when this thing takes off. Yeah, so that's exactly the type of, uh, it doesn't like the big like weeds and, and big leafy foliage. Yeah, to your guys' comment earlier about the stairs, the new adage would be, if the robot apocalypse happens, run into a field of tall grass. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. no, I think it's like it, it's here, you know, and what do you want to, what do you want to do with it? Um, you know, and I, and I, um, uh, and I think that you've, I think that's the real question. You've got a, a really incredible mobility platform here. Now, now you can start dreaming up applications. Uh, some of them are obvious things like inspection, um, but probably some of them we haven't even uh, dared to dream of yet because, you know, you guys know until this moment, uh, this, this level of mobility was not accessible or purchasable uh, by, by industry. Uh, and so now the challenge is, how do you want to apply it? Uh, what do you think about uh, bipedal robots? In uh, you know, so that's that's a great thing because I've always, you know, I, I'm I'm a pragmatist, I'm, uh, and uh, and I I I'd questioned quadrupeds until we had one, and now I don't, and now I'm like, actually, I I can think of all sorts of things I would do with this. Um, so bi bipedal robots, I'm I'm still at the point of, well, is this a problem that really exists? You know. So like this is the the uh, that is the trick, right? It's like what are the what are the norms around robot human uh, navigation? How do, we, how do we think about it? Thinking, you know, I, when I when I thought about quadrupeds, I said, well, yeah, but what are you going to do with that? Why do you, why can't you use wheels? Or isn't there a simpler way to solve that problem? Um, now that we have a quadruped, I say actually this is a really really good way to navigate rough terrain. So when you ask me about a 
a bipedal robot, I say, well, is that a problem that exists? Do we really need walking robots? But can't you just use a quadruped for that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's narrow environments. You can certainly use um, bipeds, but uh, just the, it just, it feels relatively complex.